Uh, Ashley, we don't have any handouts for the back. They said, here's a couple extra ones here, guys, unless we have... <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get some more printed out, guys, okay? So, okay. Let me ask a question to all you realtors out here. Before you write an offer, do you, or do you look at the exempt, uh, assessment and exemptions that are on the property? Yeah. Excellent. Oh. Okay, you guys, did anybody lie? Okay, lights went off. Okay, now, it is very, very important to know what, first of all, the assessment, everybody knows the assessment, when you multiply it times three, that is the fair market value that the city says the house is worth. We all know that that's not true because they could have lived in the house for a very long time, it hasn't sold, the taxes don't go up that much. What's important is to know what exemptions that those taxes are based on because your buyer may not get these <coughs> exemptions. So the assessed value minus the exemptions times the tax rate is what you owe as property taxes. And it takes a while for those taxes to adjust. Now, when your buyers get approved, they are approved for a certain amount and that lender is going to tell them, but watch the property taxes. Because if it's not owner-occupied, you're going to see a very high tax bill, okay? And if it's really low, then you're going to, that's going to be a flag that goes, okay, that probably has a senior freeze on it. Now, I'm going to, this is, I know some of this is simple, but I want to explain some of this stuff. And I'm going to teach by examples that things have happened to me for my 25 years in this business. Owner occupied. It's a $6,000 annual exemption for a residential property that is occupied as a principal dwelling. This exemption is not prorated. That is a complaint that I have had with Peoria County for a many, many years. It should be prorated in my opinion, and it could be prorated if they voted on it. Because the Illinois state taxes says that a county can implement that, make it, but they don't. What's important to know is that it has to be owner-occupied on January 1. Now, if there's an owner-occupied exemption on the home that you're selling, and it's going to go to an owner-occupied, it won't remove. It will just follow the property. That's why you fill out that P-tax that says it's going to be owner-occupied tax bill, okay? What happens is, and from my experience, my son bought a foreclosure and he closed on it in February. <coughs> City knew that it wasn't owner occupied January 1, so he didn't get that $6,000. Now, the bank based his taxes on the most current tax bill, the most current assessment, the most current tax rate. So now the bill comes and it is like what was qualified on a thousand, it's eighteen hundred dollars. Couldn't do anything about it. So now the, the, the owner gets a letter from the lender saying that your escrow is short. So now this is why it's so important to know this so that you can prepare your buyer. So now the letter says he has to pay the shortage or they will take that $600 and divide it by 12, so there's $50. Then they're gonna change his payment to reflect the 1800. So now his payment just immediately went up $200. So prepare your buyer on what can happen. And, and as long as they're prepared, it's, it's okay. It's when they're shocked. Okay, that's owner-occupied. 
January 1, must be owner occupied. Homestead exemption. Okay, when you turn 65, you get an additional $5,000 that reaches the age of 65 and occupies a residential property. Homestead, the 5,000, you only have to apply one time. Okay? This exemption is prorated. So if you're working with an older couple that is buying a house, downsizing, let's say they closed June 1st, and they bought it from an owner, occupied no exemptions, they want to call down to the county and say, I want to apply for my homestead, so they'll get that, they'll prorate that $5,000 right then and there. So they'll get the $2,500 benefit for the rest of the year. That's prorated. Okay, everybody understand that? Senior freeze. Another one that's 65. But you can't make over $55,000 total income. Total income for the household. So if you've got your kids, if you've got maybe one of your older kids that moved home, you're going to have to count their income, okay? Total income, just like you're applying for rural development. Must apply every year on the senior freeze because it could make a difference on your income. You know, if you've got an inheritance or you hit the lotto or whatever, you know, it, it could change. So they want to make sure that you're only making $55,000 or less. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing on senior freeze. You have to live in the property January 1 of the assessment year, okay? So if a senior closes on a house in June of 2017, they can apply for the senior freeze after January 1st, 2019. A senior freeze, if they had it on their house that they're selling and they move to another house, it does not transfer over. You have to live in that house two January 1s. So you've got January 1 of 18, you've got January 1 of 19. For the 2019 taxes that will be due in 2020. Have I confused everybody? Okay, good. So they're not going to reap the benefits until their tax bill comes out 2020. But when they freeze on this 2019, they will freeze the assessment that was on 2018. You get to freeze the year you qualify gets to freeze your assessment at the year before, the previous year, okay? Does not freeze taxes. The taxes can go up with an increase in the tax rate or an improvement they make on the property. So let's say you've got a 65-year-old that decided that they wanted to add on a family room that's probably going to change their assessment because they added on. There's not too many 70 that are adding on. But that, that could increase the taxes too. Okay? Yes? I had somebody <coughs> ask me a question the other day uh, on their parents' house that if they sold their parents' house, does the city recoup any of anything? No. Okay. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Glad you said that because I want to, I, okay. Homestead and senior freeze. A lot of us work with older people that move into nursing homes or assisted living. They will continue to get this freeze, the homestead and the senior freeze, as long as they don't rent the property. If it stays unoccupied and they move into a senior, free, uh, senior living they will continue to get that until it, until they sell it. Does that make sense? Okay, so it won't go away as long, as long as they're living. 
and they don't rent their house. It has to stay unoccupied. Now, if you go on the website, it says that you have to file the senior freeze by July 1, okay? That's not true. County will accept a senior freeze even the next year. I work with a lot of estates, and of course, if their mother or father was living in 2017, and they forgot January 1, 2017, and they forgot to apply for the senior freeze. They can go, I've seen them go down there in March and get it. And then that way that estate doesn't have to give that huge tax credit. And as long as it's filed on 2017, it's going to reflect on the next tax bill. Does that make sense? They, they will still, the new buyers will get it for the year that it's on there. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, okay, I think I finished that one. Does it matter when they turn 65 in the year? Would that take to the next January 1st? No, not if they've lived in the property the whole time. <laughs> if they turn 65 and 17, they're going to apply, and it's going to go back to the 2016 assessment. Okay. When you qualify, it'll freeze the assessment at the year before. Okay? Okay. Any, any questions on that? I mean, everybody get, okay, Esther. Yeah, I thought you had to do January 1. I thought you were talking about 65 or January 1. No. No. Nope. If they purchase it new, this is for somebody that's been living in the house and they turn 65. Once you turn 65, you can go down and apply and they'll freeze it the year before. Um, yes, and I, and that and that has happened where I have. Um, I'm just going to give you some examples of uh, income here. Some people, some older people cash out their retirement, their IRAs, to move into assisted living. They would not be able to take that senior freeze because they have to include that as income. So you've got cash gifts. What, what is included? Alimony or maintenance, annuities and other pensions, business income, capital gains, uh, Cash winnings, like I said, dividends, farm income, lump sum social security payments, long-term care insurance benefits, social security income, Medicare, wages, salaries, and tips. So it, I mean, it That's is, about it, it's about everything. Um, when we get to the last screen, I've got the contact information. Um, Okay, the committee wanted me to talk a little bit about this natural disaster. You will notice that a lot of the homes that are in Washington have been rebuilt, but yet they still have that pretty low taxes on it. Well, they were allowed to file what they call a natural disaster homestead, and that freezes their assessment to the year before it happens. So they were able to freeze their assessment to 2011 because it happened in 2012. They, they needed to file this as soon as the house was rebuilt to freeze that exemption because while it was not built, they were only getting assessed on the lot. You understand that? That really went down because that was only then a land assessment when there was no house there. So now they rebuilt. There is a stipulation that the house cannot be bigger than 110% of the original. So there's a formula that the county uses if they went over that 110%, and I don't know how, what it is, and I didn't really go there. I just wanted you to know. So the best way, if you are buying, if your buyers are buying one of these homes, if they, they're going to get it for the four, 
full year. All right, so if they bought the house June 17th, June uh, 18, 2018 taxes will reflect that natural disaster, okay? It dro it'll drop off in 18 for the taxes that are June 19. I talked to Tazewell County because it says in the directions that you have to apply for it every year. I said, oh, so you have to apply for this every year? No, we don't, you don't have to apply for it every year. I said, well, well that's, that's good. So really, right now, the senior freeze is the only one that I know of that has to be applied for every single year. Um, okay, any questions on, well, I think I might have another. Any questions on that? Okay, here are some other ones that are that that you'll are common and that you'll probably see. Home improvement exemption. If a seller went down and got a permit to put up a garage, the city is going to tax them on that. So they have an opportunity to go and get a home improvement exemption up to $25,000 of the assessment, okay? So that would be like a $75,000 improvement. When you see this on a tax bill, first thing you wanna do is you wanna call down there and find out when does that go off? Because even if, let's say that they sell it after the first year of the home improvement, your buyer will get the benefit of the remaining three years. Then it will drop off. And your buyer needs to be aware that he's gonna lose that exemption three years down the road. Everybody understands that? Okay, another common one is the disability exemption. $2,000 in addition. Like my brother is disabled. So he gets that extra $2,000 on his personal property. Um, I'm not going to go into too much of this because I read it. And it, if you've got a disabled veteran, you will run across properties that have no taxes. Not very often, but they don't have any taxes. Now that's either a senior that's lived in the property forever and ever, they don't have to pay taxes, or it could be a disabled veteran. So this is one that I would call down and talk to the county and find out, you know, what is going on and how does this work. Returning veterans homestead means that your seller has been on active duty in war, which I don't know what they consider war, you know. That's... I guess that's for the county to decide. Do you know what I mean? Like in, so when they come back, they can get a $5,000 exemption, but these are two that I would definitely call the county on to see if, or have your seller call and get the information so that you're not relaying the wrong information. Yes, yes. I was able to do that for my son. Okay. The disabled veteran, yeah. It, it, it was fairly easy. Okay. Thank you for your service. Here's what you're signing. Awesome. Because they do have the different percentages. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it, it goes on how much disabled you are. Okay, that's what I mean. It's kind of intense. You got to, okay. Yeah, it's over 70%. They don't pay state property taxes. I have a guy now that he actually purchased a brand new home and he pays no property. Right, 90% disabled. 90%. So that, it, it does go by the percentage. What kind of information did you need to provide them? His disability report. Okay. On that disability exemption, they have to find that every year. They'll take one year. Yes. I didn't. You didn't? I didn't. No, you don't have to. No, you don't have to apply for this every year, right? No, nope, no, nope, it'll carry. Do you? See, every every county's different, you know. Um, when we get further into this, you'll see how easy Tazewell County is with property taxes than what Peoria County is, but, you know. Um, any other questions? Uh, so, do you pay, does the 
is a person that buys a house, do they pay the taxes for the next year and then can they apply these taxes in a year? Like, will they pay the first property taxes um, for the rest of the remaining year, I guess? Or do you, do you no, no, the, 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 you're talking about the seller? Well, the, the buyer, I guess. Do you have the exemption? Let's say you're 100% exempt. When do you apply for that? Well, first of all, I would go down immediately, correct? Go down immediately to the county and apply for this. Because, like, let's say that you just closed in the middle of June. The seller is giving you a credit for the most current assessment tax rate. So you're going to get a credit. They're going to establish your escrow accounts. And then you're going to go down and do this and then probably get... Because remember, 2017 taxes aren't due until 2018. So they'll have the opportunity to get this. Do they prorate this? No. No, okay. So it'll be, okay. It, it, it takes, takes a little bit time to get it all. Yes, Jeannie? Um, the returning veteran, is that just for that year? Or just yeah, I, year? Think, I think that there is a... I think you can apply for it again, but there's rules on that. Okay. It has to be, to me, it sounded like a war, I mean, like you're an active fighting type thing. So if you're on boot camp or something like that, you're not going to get it. You know what I mean? It's or just stationed somewhere and it's not active. Yeah, it's not what, like, let's say they were in Iraq and then they come back home to, and they bought a house. Is that just that year for that taxes, or does it go on? I mean, is it not? A It'll just be, I think it's just one year exemption. It's just one year exemption. Huh? My husband's doing it. Okay. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions so far, Esther? <laughs> I, I don't know anything about the gold they'll star. Like the they'll be like the totally disabled. Yeah. I'm not sure that's passed as well yet, but it would. So they're trying to pass a law that says if you're the survivor of a deceased, I would say that it would have to be a spouse. Okay, yeah. You know, a lot of these exemptions will carry over to a spouse. Okay, so, um, okay, let's talk about protesting your taxes. How many people have protested taxes? Yay, awesome. Okay, here's the easy one. Recent purchase, okay? Purchase date, date must be within the prior 24 months. Peoria County requires a copy of the entire appraisal and the P-tax. Tazewell County requires two copies of the settlement statement and P-tax. If the appraisal is more than the purchase price, they are going to go on the appraised amount. They are not going to lower the assessment to match the good deal that you just got. I thought they couldn't ask for the appraisal because of private property, I was told. No. If you, if you, if you want to... What happens if you don't do any of it? All right, you bought a house for 30... I'll give you a, for instance, my son bought a house for around 30 and appraised at 65. What if he doesn't do anything? Did he go off and just stay the same as what it was? It's just going to stay the same. Okay. So if if your son has a house that's assessed for ninety thousand dollars, and he got it for thirty, and he doesn't want to fight that, it's going to be the taxes are going to be based on ninety thousand. And keep remember, if he bought it, that owner occupied is not going to fall off until eighteen reflected in nineteen taxes. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're going to see a lot of this this year, okay? This is, I wouldn't want to be on the Board of Review this year <laughs> because, uh, you know, when these houses start selling for less than what the assessment is, 
your neighbor can protest too. So equity means the assessment of your property is higher than the assessment of the comparable properties. So this will probably be on year two, okay? So now you've got all these recent purchases where everybody's gonna protest down to the appraised amount that they got the house for, which you and I both know it's not a whole lot more than what you purchased it for, okay? So now this assessment's going to go down. So now that next door neighbor that's still living in his house, he's going to go through because everything's online. You can see it. He's going to go through and go, wait a minute. All the neighbors on the street are assessed at this amount. I'm going to protest. It's not fair that I'm still paying $7,500 a year. When these guys got down to six, I'm just throwing an example out there. I don't know this for a fact, but. Okay, so that's going to happen. Then you've got the market means the assessed value is greater than the one-third of fair market value. I've done this one for my son because his, he was assessed for more than the houses that were selling. I didn't have to look at their assessment. I looked at recent sales. You know, if this house sold for 70, and this house sold for 70, and this house, okay, we're going we're gonna to do this. Okay. Now, if submitting an appraisal, if you can't, if you're dealing with a, one of your clients that you cannot find any comps, okay, you might want to suggest to them to get an appraisal so that he, so that you can submit that appraisal. Now, that, what, two, 250 to 300 whatever, you know, a private appraisal seems to be cheaper than what the bank charges you, okay? But it probably would be, be good because there are companies out there that will protest your taxes for you. And they take anywhere, what was the last one, was it 20% of the savings? They'll take 20% of the savings that they've saved you. Well, 20, an appraisal is probably cheaper than 20%. So, you know, you have to make that, you know, they have to make that decision on what they want to do. So, um, did, what's in your packet? I wanted to, let me see what, where's the packet? I wanted to show you. Okay. Okay. Turn here. So, this, this, Peoria County, this is Peoria County when you, when you turn in, okay? If you're doing market and equity without an appraisal, you get to fill out this little grid for the wonderful Peoria County. See this grid? It is so much fun. Now, you go to Taswell County, and you've got, on the back page, you've got, okay, do your three comparables, send them in, say your reasons, done. I mean, it's so much easier in Tazewell County, ooh, sorry, Tazewell County than Peoria County. Make sure that you have good comparables. Okay. When you go back to Peoria County, if it's a recent purchase, if it's a recent purchase and you're sending in this document, the P tax and the appraisal and the settlement statement, you do not need a hearing. They will reduce it down to the appraised amount. I've never had a problem with this. If you're doing an equity or a market, then you're going to ask for a hearing because you're going to have to defend what you just sent in, unless you have the appraisal, and then it might help. But a lot of times they're going to, they're going to want you to defend that. Okay, so you want to get the closest comparables that you can get. Now, it says when you read the directions, it says that the first thing you should do is contact the township assessor. Okay? 
There are some people that if they close in the beginning of the year, they will call the township assessor, send in the information. My fear has always been, are they going to want to come out and see the house? You know? So, are they going to want to come out and see the house? So, I've, I've only count, called the township assessor one time because they raised my assessment, and I personally knew that I could not sell my house for what they had it assessed at because I've got a problem with my house. It, it floods from the uh, storm drain. Okay, it floods. So that's something that the, is caused by the city. I haven't gotten it corrected yet. So I called the township assessor out. And I showed them how it's destroying my garage. I showed them how everything, that it flows like a river down my backyard. And they took, like, let me see, it was assessed at 140, it's down to 116. One, it, they immediately dropped it to 116, and it's still down to one, I think it's down to 113 because, you know, it's, so they haven't raised my fair market value. They've kept it low until the city can resolve this issue. So if you have a property that you know that you're not going to be able to sell it, for the fair market value, you tell your seller, have the assessor come out and see that there are issues with this. And one of them could be a basement that is, that's settling in vogue, you know? Because you and I both know there's not a buyer out there that's going to buy that property if they know if this is not corrected. So you need to correct it. You know, they could bring it down. Once you get it corrected, they may take it back up. This, my issue, is the city's issue. So, I teach by example. Please don't ever buy a house in front of a storm drain. Okay? I'm going to tell you. Don't ever do that. Yeah, because this condition they changed. I did that on my son's house. They moved the condition from good to poor. Yeah. We're having the same issue. Yeah. Okay. I have a, I have a question about the appraisal, though. Yes. So, I mean, obviously, the majority of sales, you're going to have appraisal involved. Do you find though that the bank appraisal tends to be higher than what a private appraisal would be? There's a lender in the there's a couple lenders in the house. Um, <laughs> it's a fair do, do I what do you guys think? Margie is shaking her head no. Um, there's more tendency, you know, here's where I find a low. It just always magically kind of comes in. But then, how many have come in where it's not been at the price? Okay, there's been a lot of those. What I find is that when they got an appraisal to do a home equity line, it seems to come in much lower than because they they, they just want to loan you the money. You know, you don't need correct lenders. Okay, so there's where you know if if they got an appraisal because they got a home equity line, uh, you could try using it. But, you know, it, and another thing is, it has to be an arm's length transaction, okay? So if you sold your son your house for a $50,000 savings, don't think that he's probably going to get this reduced. It has to be an arm's length transaction, meaning there's no relation between the two of you. And they will know. Because have, has everybody seen the new Peoria County website? Wow, we have the sellers' names on there. It's amazing. They have lots of information on there now. You know, so they'll find out. The most recent, it, it, you know what? It's going to be. This is not going to be any different than when you do a CMA. You're going to go closest. You can't find any in three months. You're going to go six months. The best comps that you can find. Just, just as if you're doing a CMA. And Donna, you've done plenty of those, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, here is an example that I wanted to show you. Because we're going to do, if I, if I need a, a calculator... Uh, he just said that she would uh, do it for me. But I kind of got it spelled out. This is a house that, that, I, that I just recently sold. 
And um, he wanted to keep his payment at a certain amount. And the, the taxes on it were a thousand. Do we have this in the that in the handout? Is okay in the handout. So the taxes were a thousand twelve. Here's another tricky thing when you're dealing with Peoria County. You're not going to be. You, you got to remember that that garbage fee is on there. So. So you got see this you got a minus one hundred sixty eight dollars off of that, and then that remainder is what you know you're trying to you're not protesting taxes you're protesting assessment okay, so the current assessment it, tax bill was a thousand twelve, using that thousand twelve kept that payment to where he wanted to be, all right, but. I told him what his payment will end up, what his taxes are going to end up being. Because they filed, they got the senior freeze for 2017, and they got the homestead. He'll have that benefit for next year, for 2018. 2018, all that's going to drop off, and if most current assessment, 37,260 only minus the 6,000, only the owner occupied times the current tax rate. <clears throat> this is what his payment will be when the taxes come out in 2019. He was <coughs> fine with that because personally he could handle this the year that's due. Okay? They can budget. This would be a young guy, maybe just starting out in his job, that knows that he's going to be making more money in 2019, so this isn't a problem. But he needs the 1,012 to qualify or to feel comfortable at what he's at. Does that make sense? So this senior freeze, I believe they did file like, like in March. I mean, it was... They make sure. Now, here's, I would personally call. Don't depend on the title company, okay? Because that's your job. We have to, we, uh, that's value. That's why they hire us, so that we know what's going on. I always call to see if the senior freeze is on there. If it has not been recorded, I quickly call and say, you need to get this in, or you're going to be giving a very hefty tax proration. So I call to see if it's been turned in. Um, so he's going to get the benefit for 2018, payable in 19. It'll be it. So does everybody understand that? Yeah. What's the and That's the garbage. No. And um, so, for, for somebody who's escrowing and uh, purchased a property that had a senior freeze on it, yeah. so, and for the lenders, um, we know the senior freeze is going to be on it for the first year that you're there, and after that's going to drop off. How are you handling escrow um, up front? Are you handling it? Kind of told me the escrow is going to work off of what the actual senior freeze because that's going to right. be there. Yeah, so it's going to be off of that. But we do warn them, you know, this is going to bump up big time. Yep. Probably year down the road, so they've got to be prepared that they're going to have a shortage on their taxes. But we, we so it will end up as a more. shortage. It won't. They won't just start paying in the next year as they should for what it what it they, will be. They can if they, they choose to. Okay. If they know so the bill's going to go up, they can pay extra on their escrow. Mm -hmm. And they can do that. But yeah, they're going to escrow based on the current taxes. And then you'll be and short. Then be short. Mm -hmm. So warn your buyer that. Right. But, but there's always a little bit of a buffer. You know, the, the, the pro and I just talked to a lender yesterday because he wanted me to, to um, mention the fact that some lenders... Some, some lenders, they're all different, and you need to talk to the lender. Some lender needs to qualify that buyer at the higher taxes, too, but some are not. 
but some are. So it just depends on who your underwriter is and says, well, wait a minute, these taxes are going to be this much two years down the road, he just won't qualify. Well, you know, life changes, you know. Maybe I'm going to go out and get a second job or, you know, what. It's, we make things work, don't we, you know. So, but the problem is if they escrowed at the higher amount, they're going to do an escrow analysis in October. And they're going to find that they've got too much money. So now they're going to send you back the money, and then the following year they're going to call you and they go, oh, well, you're short. And, of course, those people just spent that money, you know, and so it's just better to let it ride it out, you know. But just the important thing is to make your buyer aware. They don't like to be shocked. Okay. Any questions on that so far? All right. Okay, now, this is another one I closed. Um, I have to teach from experience, okay? Okay, this was a property that, hello. Um, this was one that the property taxes were, oh my God, it was $171. That was one of those that we talked about, okay? So the assessment on it was, where is that? Where is that assessment? 34,780, okay? 34,780 times three is, my calculator is 112. It was assessed at 112. Huh? 104. 104. He bought it for 82. Okay? Now, his taxes, she got signed up for the freeze, and I forget when we closed on this. We closed on this uh, in 15. So, 2016's taxes reflected the $171. Got it? It was important that we protest that 34760 <coughs> the following year. See, he closed in October, couldn't protest for 15. Had to wait for the following year. So I got a hold of my buyer and I said, we're gonna protest. We're gonna get this assessment down to what you purchased it for and the appraisal. And then when this senior freeze drops off, it's not gonna be that big of a hit. Because if I took this all off and based it on the 34760, which was $20,000 more than what he paid for it, it would be a much larger hit. And I do this for my buyers. Okay, so when the new assessment comes out, I go and get my inventory of what I've sold since September, and I look at their assessments, and I will... Send them a little note. This is a hero. You're a hero, okay? I send them a little note, and I say, you know what? I think we need to protest these taxes. And I said, send me the appraisal. I'll get you to sign the form. You know, the you got to have that appeal thing signed by the owner. I said, we don't need a hearing. And I collect them all, and I take them all down to the county, and they stamp, 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 and they give me a copy of it, and I send it on to my, the buyer that I do it for now, I don't take a lot. If I need five a year, not, you know. I'm not one of those people that you hire and I'm going to do it for you because, well, I'm not going to do it for you. <laughs> I just do it for my clients, you know. So, um, but you really become a hero. And are they not going to refer people to you if you save them money, you know? Another thing is, I went and looked at a house that had no exceptions on it. And I said, how long have you lived here? Six years, I went, whoa, you should have been getting this owner-occupied exemption. They go, what? And I go, you don't have any exemptions. I said, call down there at the county. I think they'll refund you some money. I think he got three years of exemptions back because it was their fault. They didn't file it correctly. They're not going to give it all back to you, but they're going to give some of it back to you. I was a hero. 
They don't, they've never forgotten me. You saved me money. I'm like going, yeah, well, you know, I, I want to be fair to everybody. That's, that's the name of the game, you know. I, taxes are inevitable, but let's be fair, you know. Um, okay, so does everybody understand that? It's best to get the assessment down as low as you can. This also works when a senior is buying a house that's assessed more, okay? So let's say, remember the senior, they have to live January 1 and January 1. So if they bought a house in 2017 that's overly assessed, you want them to protest because you want to get that assessment as low as you can. So they're not going to qualify until 2019, but they're going to freeze that assessment the year prior. So lower the assessment before it freezes in. Okay? Yeah. Yes, pretty much, yeah. Yep. So freeze the assessment before, no, lower the assessment before you freeze it. Okay? Okay. All right. Guys, here is all. Now, a lot, this is Woodford County. I hate their site, you know. <laughs> they are way, they're always way behind all of us as far as getting assessments out, okay? Um, Peoria County, none of the new assessments are out yet. All right, and the rule is that once they publish it, you've got 30 days to submit any protest. Taswell Assessments usually has to publish by August 10th, okay? So that means that you'll have to have those protests in by September 10th. Peoria County last year, I think it was almost September 30th that you had to have. It was, it was pretty late. Um, and Woodford County, oh my God, I, I, I mean, it, it varies, you know. It, you can call, I gave you their phone number, you can call and ask them and say, when is the new assessment going to come out? Um, okay. You know, one of the suggestions that came out of our committee was that we try to do a top, uh, do a, oh, oh, you know, what, what is it? Drop down. Thank you a drop down so that we can choose what exemptions are on the property, okay, in the MLS, which would be really helpful for everybody, correct? Yes. Because I see all these abbreviations, OO, owner occupied, which really the abbreviation is GHE. If you go on the way, it's a general homestead exemption is the owner occupied. Um, the uh, homestead exemption, where did I, okay, general homestead is G-H-E, homestead is H-E, um, senior freeze, okay, is S-C-A-F-H-E. Yeah, that's the senior, it's called the Senior Citizens Assessment Freeze Homestead Exemption. And we put S-E-N. <laughs> Or S E N whatever, you know. Yeah. Homestead. What about the home revalue thing that's like, coming up on all of them in March? It's got home H R C T home revalue. Yeah. Yeah. H R C T that's, that's that's the G H E. It's H R E is owner occupied. So so first of all, before we make that drop down, we're gonna have to really figure out what the abbreviations are. <laughs> Or maybe make our own abbreviations so that everybody in the board will understand exactly what it is. That's a that'll be a training. Uh, okay, according according to the Peoria County Supervisor of Assessments, 
Uh, the GHE is the 6,000. It's called general homestead exemption. The um, homestead would be the HIE, homestead improvement exemption, HIE. And then the senior freeze is S-C-A-F-H-E. I don't know. We have we'll have to look into that before we change anything, guys. So don't 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 first of all, there isn't enough room to put all these in, in the spot where you're talking about. Okay? That's why so many have said O O S C M. You know what I mean? Because we we haven't allowed enough room in our MLS sheet. But we'll work on that. Esther. That's the home improvement exemption. I'm sorry. HIE is home improvement. Homestead exemption is HE. That's exactly right. Yeah. Sorry. Deb. Hey, Becky, I just want everybody to know, like in Morton, we have, in just in our seating room, we have four to six different townships. And, like, I can live on one street on one side, and they can live on the other. And they're all different assessed. Just, we had the assessor come to our office, and it was quite interesting. Was so it? every every neighborhood has a different assessor. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so you want to kind of watch that when you're looking at them, too. Well, the goal of... The, the goal of that board is to make sure that everybody is paying one-third, that the assessment is one-third of the fair market value, and they will make adjustments to hit that mark. That's the mark that they need to hit, okay? Any other questions? Wait, did, did this help or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, well, you know, the state multiplier. Well, the state multiplier is used in order to get everybody up to the one third. Since we're already one third, if you look at our tax bill, that state multiplier hardly ever changes. It's usually just one. But there are places in the state that they're only paying 20% of the assessed value. 30% of the assessed value, okay? So that multiplier needs to be added in order to get a fair, that's what that means. But I will tell you, should, all these rules that I talked about are, uh, Chicago's a different game. <laughs> Chicago, Chicago doesn't do their, you know, their taxes like we do down here, so. But... I mean, what, where were we at that we showed in, I can't remember, Chuck Weaver, did everybody attend Chuck Weaver? Well, he showed, at how, how about that example? Yeah. The example on a house here that was 200 and, was it 84 I thought, wasn't it? 282. Our taxes were 7,000, was it eight? Eight? And then Chicago, the same house, just a couple thousand dollars more, was five. Twenty-five percent of their value is what they're leaving on the table in Chicago. No wonder they don't need money for schools. So now keep in mind, keep in mind, you can argue the assessment, guys, but here's here's the bottom line. All the assessments are done. All the taxing districts do their budget. They tell the county what they need to run their budgets. And they're going to figure out what that tax rate's going to be. So even though you've got your assessment down, they're going to somehow get money because they'll raise the tax rate. Assessment comes down, tax rate will go up. But at least, I know, but at least you're being assessed at the right amount. We can't do anything about the tax rate, you know. Pay attention to what uh, referendums are on the tax that you vote on. Those are huge because if they raise, if they want a tax increase over a certain amount, it has to be ran through a referendum. So be aware of what, get out there and vote and say, no, don't want it, you know. 
So it's, I hate taxes, but what are you going to do? What do they say? Die and pay taxes? What, what, what is that? Not the taxes. Yeah. Uh, so the assessed value only changes if the owner of the property does something about it. That's right. They're not. No, no. Well, I don't know. Like the sale of property. No, they will not. No. <laughs> and here's the thing: they're not supposed to chase a price. So if you happen to pay more money than what it's assessed at, eventually it will go up, but it won't go up like the next year. Now, Tazewell County might go up, okay? They, I think they work it a little bit different. They may look at that price. So, I've heard. I've heard. So, again, if your buyer is paying more than the assessed amount, prepare them that their taxes are going to go up to this amount. That's all you have to do so that you're not getting that phone call that says, my God, you didn't tell me my taxes were going to be that much. You know, I didn't get the right... I didn't get the right uh, credit. Okay, once you get the credit, and look over that. You know, just like we do a seller's worksheet when we present an offer to a seller and we tell them what they're going to net and we don't, do we not figure up what that tax credit's going to be? Well, then you need to figure up for your buyer what that tax credit's going to be. Not that it's going to help in closing costs, okay? Don't go there, you know. Um, but... At least they're going to know what the taxes are going to go up to. So when you get that, when you look at that settlement statement and you see, well, that doesn't look right. That's not what I talked to with my seller about. I need to go back and look at this. I mean, I've had them forget the senior freeze, and I've had to go in and go, okay, wait a minute, guys. They filed the senior freeze. That's why I mean, don't, you make sure that you're doing it correctly. Don't depend on somebody else. You know what? That might not be a bad idea. No, we can take that to contracts. Pardon? Oh, she said, wouldn't it be nice to have a form, another form, that we have the buyer sign that we've made them aware that the taxes are going to be going up. So what it would kind of be would be kind of a tax preparation sheet for a buyer future. I think that form should say that they need to call the tax assessor and become clear. I don't want to take on that responsibility. You know, I'm not a tax, I, I already tell my people, I'm not the tax assessor. Here's some general information. Here's a thing from the tax thing. But you need to be clear. Call them yourself. Right. Just like I said about that. But what I'm talking about is just the most current information that the title company is going to go off. Right. But okay. I mean, as far as signing this form, I think that, yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's open into camera. Or else make required education for agents to be eligible. Mm. Now, let me think about that. Yeah. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. 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 I bet you James going to tell you. Yeah. Uh, Karen. Probably worth saying if you have a client buying a bank repo that they're not going to look at what what the only thing they're going to look at is the last tax bill most likely. That's right. So if if their exemptions on there, you know they're going to get a lower proration. If the assessment is way high, you know that's that's a bonus to them. But that's kind of a whole new ball game if you're buying from a corporate so to yeah. speak, seller. Yeah. Well, you know, let's start out with just kind of educating mm -hmm. our buyer in that know that these are dropping off because you will not qualify for them. And my best estimate 
you know, the worst scenario. Here's the thing, like the natural disaster exemption. They, you know, like if somebody bought one of those houses, it's, they're still going to get that natural disaster when the tax bill comes out next year. It stays on there for the whole year. It's not prorated. I talked to Tazewell County about that. So if they want an idea, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, tax assessment is one-third of the fair market value. You paid $300,000 for the home. So worst scenario is it's got a $100,000 assessment. You get to subtract your $6,000 owner-occupied exemption, and the most current tax rate is this. You, as an agent, need to know how to do that, or you're going to get calls like what Cindy said because they trust you to know how this works. You know, does that make sense? It's very simple. You don't have to go into great detail. That's why on that, that uh, disabled veteran returning from war and stuff like that, I don't want to be the one to tell them that. I'd rather have them talk to them to make sure that they're doing it correctly. But there are certain things that I do feel comfortable talking to my buyer about. Because I'll fight for them if, if need be. Believe me, I have been trying to fight for owner-occupied proration for a long time and not winning. So, um, okay. Any other questions? Okay. One hour. Yay.